Jeff, first of all, thanks for joining us here at the 2010 AEA Trade Show and Convention. Thank you very much. Obviously, you've had a phenomenal year, uh, but let me start out with the broad question. A decade from, from now, what would you like the aviation community to get from the adventure or misadventure on the Hudson? What kind of legacy do you want to leave with the decision-making process that led to such a great outcome? You know, I don't, I don't really even think it's, uh, it's anything that Sully and I did. What we did was we followed the plan that was uh, laid out for us. Uh, I've been in this industry for 25 years, and it was entirely different when I was first, uh, first hired. Uh, the, the concepts of cockpit resource management, the procedures that we use, where we constantly cross-check each other, and we know what to do in emergency situations. We don't sit and wait for orders like we used to. You know, that's really the legacy is that this is, this is the triumph of, of those procedures of the cockpit resource management techniques, you know, and, and all the people who developed those over the years. We were doing what we're supposed to do. We did our jobs. We used the tools that we brought with us that was provided by our aviation management. And this is the kind of success story that can occur when that happens. There were some comments made by Captain Sullenberger concerning the state of the job, if you will, before congressional committees as well as in various public statements. What would you tell a pilot looking at a potential airline career somebody who's getting ready to go to the commuters, so forth and so on. What advice do you give them, not just in how to pursue a career, but how to survive a career? Well, I mean, obviously it's, it's difficult right now. You know, uh, there has always been a bit of dues pain, but at this point the dues pain can extend for your entire career. And, uh, you know, I'm very actively working in Washington to do something about that. But, uh, you know, where, where the future is, I don't know. Uh, it is a question mark right now. I, I would say that, you know, if you're young, um, things change fast in this industry as well. I mean, I was hired at U.S. Air as a B scaler. You know, at half the half the salaries that the pilots were making, uh, you know, who were hired just a year before me. But that ended fairly rapidly for me. You know, within five years, and and, and I had a good career for a while, anyways, and until maybe uh, five or six years ago. Uh, it, it's hard to say, you know. But on the other hand. Aviation flying, particularly, is something that's in your blood. I mean, if you if you want to do it, you'll never be happy doing anything else. And uh, and and I, I you know I wouldn't discourage anybody from going into it, but it is it is a hard road. How would you like to see the job change? What would make the job more livable, survivable, and hopefully enjoyable? Well, I I think that we've actually created quite a good uh, training environment and operational environment. Um, I, but it's a very unstable job, which is, you know, so it's on a personal level, you know, you're, I mean, at U.S. Airways, I've worked there for 24 years. I think four of them have been good. So, uh, you know, you're constantly uh, concerned about how you're going to, you know, feed your family tomorrow. I, I chose to become a general contractor, and, uh, you know, I, I work all the time because of that, because I work two jobs. Um, but, uh, and then that, that's given me uh, some peace. You know, because I know that if one thing doesn't work, the other one will. But that really shouldn't have to happen. You know, you should have to have, be able to have some kind of a satisfaction in, in what you are accomplishing in your primary career and, and also feel that it has uh, uh, some sort of longevity. Integra Release 9 sets a new standard with the easiest to use pilot interface in all of general aviation. Access to any of Release 9's powerful capabilities is as simple as pressing the desired bi-directional page key. Pressing the same key in a desired direction navigates to the clearly labeled tabs with no more guessing as to what a given pilot input would do. Avidyne's Integra Release 9 is the next generation in fully integrated flight deck technology and the easiest to use page and tab user interface is just one of the many benefits designed to make your flying easier and safer. The morning of the incident, there's just, there, there, isn't, uh, there aren't many pilots out there who haven't had a little bit of a moment where an engine's run rough or the thing that just gets their attention in the, the back of the neck like, oh boy, this is not going to be fun. How easy, hard, whatever it was to transition from, oh, they, okay, this is another day and you know, we're off the ground and heading out and it's going to be a nice flight to, okay, we're in a real interesting situation now and every second counts. You know, the one thing that is I have taken away from this myself 
is this real appreciation for the training we have, the procedures we had, because I know that, you know, I made that transition very rapidly from we've lost all engines, what are we going to do, to wait a minute, I know what to do. Mm -hmm. And I instantly started into what I had been trained to do, uh, almost as if it was rote memory. And that allowed me to actually accomplish things while I was uh, adjusting myself to the situation. Can you talk about the overall performance of the airplane and what was required to adapt it to a mission that nobody really believed would ever happen? Well, you know, uh, you know, as you say, that there have been some books coming put out that somehow the airplane landed itself in the Hudson River, and, and I, I, don't, I mean, it's a, it's a fly-by wire. But I mean, if it was a Boeing, it wouldn't have been any different. I mean, there, uh, you know, whether it was an Airbus or a Boeing or fly-by wire, or not really had no bearing at all on this particular incident. We weren't flying it on the autopilot. You know, uh, it was never on the autopilot. You know, from the moment we took off, because you know, this is well, this was my very first flight or very first trip on the Airbus because I just gotten out of training the week before and flying this side stick was something I was trying to get used to so I I was hand flying it when we flew into the geese and of course Sully took it over and you know he hand flew it down to the ground and the, the concept of the fly-by wire or the stall protection really wasn't a factor because you know we were never that we were never anywhere close to stall so uh, I, I've never understood that whole theory that that had anything to do with it because it had absolutely nothing to do with the incident. You know, as far as the airplane or, or uh, the Airbus, I know I, I had the opportunity in October to go over and fly the A380, you know, a couple hours in the airplane, not just a simulator. Those Airbus test pilots, I mean, as crazy as we were, are about it in this country, they were even more so. They've been through the simulations. They did. And they said, you know, even everything we did, we did right. And you know, they they were very very impressed with uh, with what both Sully and I did that day. You know, the success that we had that day wasn't us, and it wasn't that day, and we had a lot of help. But it's uh, all the people over the years, the decades that have you know worked and strived hard to develop our con our. Uh, current practices in crew resource management, you know, our cockpit procedures that allowed us to work together as two people and, and, and do what we were uh, able to do that day. That's really the success story. They're the people who really deserve the credit for this. Freedom through control. Cirrus has completely reinvented the personal aircraft and the entire experience of owning a personal aircraft. It's a bold new take on private aviation that we call Cirrus Flying 2.0. You set the schedule. You chart the course. You're in control. What's your future in aviation? What would you like to see happen for you from here on out? I mean, above and beyond the celebrity that comes with such an extraordinary event and, of course, the way it's been played. but. What do you want as a pilot? Um, well, you know, uh, uh, the celebrity is uh, something that, uh, I, I don't know, I've never really adjusted to, I guess. It's, it's, it's kind of, you're resistant to that when you're, uh, you know, you're just a normal person. People pay attention to you. It's like, oh, why are you paying attention to, to me? And what, the, the, what you learn very quickly is it's not about you. Mm -hmm. You know, it's about you represent something to this other person. So, you know, but... Uh, uh, you know, what I do right now, what my main focus is, is I'm the Vice President of the Coalition Airline Pilots Associations in Washington, D.C. I got myself elected to that position last fall, mm -hmm. you know, from the notoriety of this. And um, we represent 28,000 airline pilots, American Airlines pilots, Southwest Airlines, UPS, U.S. Airways pilots, um, NetJets, which isn't an airline, but they have 2,500 pilots themselves. And uh, one of the Teamsters locals that represents a large group of uh, cargo carriers. Mm -hmm. And uh, we work in Washington to advocate for issues of importance to airline pilots and safety, security, and, and legislative issues. And I'm obviously extremely active in that. I just came down from doing that yesterday. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, I hope, is going to provide a legacy for me uh, personally. The, the FA reauthorization bill is going through the House, and it's in some way, shape, or form, once it gets signed, it's going to dramatically raise the hiring requirements for uh, any Part 121 air carrier, which is anybody you would buy a ticket on. And uh, that is going to be something that's going to be in, an instant safety improvement, and it's going to be very beneficial to this industry. And I can say that I was, you know, right there at the start of that because it was really our group that 
first push for that, first envisioned that, sold it to the House Aviation Subcommittee, so it got in their bill last fall, pushed for it in the Senate, and you know, when that comes to pass, that will be the crowning moment of my life.